Which workouts can you count on when you need to improve your VO2 max? Should you go slow and easy, focusing on endurance? Or do you need to push the pace with intervals and sprint training? In this video, we'll help you navigate the science and choose routines that boost your fitness to an optimal level. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob, I'm a physical therapist and the creator of Why I Exercise, a training resource I'm building out of my intensive study of health, longevity, and peak performance. If you want to improve your VO2 max, you need workouts that are demanding enough to stimulate adaptations in your muscle cells, heart, blood vessels, and lungs. But which workouts will make you fit without taking too much time or increasing your risk of injury? Low to moderate intensity, steady state exercise is the most doable approach to training. Intervals and sprint training can give you results more quickly, but the high demands of these workouts can drain too much energy and increase your risk of strains and other injuries. Should we combine these workouts? Most studies look at how VO2 max improves with moderate, high intensity, or sprint training in isolation but top endurance athletes incorporate all of these workouts and more into their weekly training schedule. Let's take a closer look at these training methods to find the best ways to update your routine. Depending on your fitness level, a common steady state endurance workout that can improve your VO2 max would be a 30 to 45 minute bike ride, brisk walk, or jog. Your heart rate is about 60 to 70% of its maximum during these workouts and the effort level should feel as if you can speak short sentences without getting out of breath. A recent meta-analysis study suggests that you can improve your VO2 max by about 10% with six weeks of continuous moderate intensity exercise. A 10% increase is enough to remarkably reduce your premature death risk, especially if you're starting from a low fitness level. But it takes 45 to 50 minute training sessions four days per week for six weeks to reach the 10% level. Long duration intervals require a very strong effort level. Your heart rate is about 90% of maximum. You can only say a couple words between breaths, especially toward the end of each interval. An example interval workout after a good warm up would be four minute bursts of a strong effort at a faster than usual pace, followed by a three minute rest break between each interval where you can recover your breathing and your energy. According to another meta-analysis study, you can improve your VO2 max by up to 17% with 10 weeks of interval training. Even a 15% improvement in your VO2 max would be enough to strongly improve your health risks. But how many people would be able to push themselves at a 90% of maximum heart rate level three workouts per week for over two months. A comparable workout popular with endurance athletes but less common in the scientific literature is threshold intervals. These are workouts with a longer hard effort at about 80 to 85 percent of maximum heart rate 10 minutes at a time with just a one minute rest break then you repeat that 10 minute effort. These workouts are also done 20 to 30 minutes straight just maintaining that 80 to 85% maximum heart rate effort. Sprint workouts feature brief, intense efforts, often with long recovery periods in between so you can recover your breathing and get your energy back because at the end of each sprint, you really feel breathless. Example sprint workouts would be six 30 second hard runs or biking efforts with two to four minute rest breaks between each effort. A thorough warm up is a must to achieve top performance and prevent any injuries or strains during a sprint workout. I usually spend 10 to 12 minutes working on drills, brief stretches, and muscle activation exercises to prepare my muscles and tendons for this type of effort. If you're going to run for your sprint intervals, it's safer to run uphill so you can get the same effort level with a slower speed. You can get the same effect by increasing the resistance level on the cardio machine of your choice. Using a six to eight week training period with two to three sprint workouts per week, studies found that participants could increase their VO2 max by seven to 10%. And a meta-analysis study found that 
less fit participants only needed two to four sprint intervals per workout to get a similar improvement in their VO2 max. For my sprint workouts, I run hills, but I also incorporate cross training. I pull a 25 pound sled uphill and I jump rope for several of the reps. Between a thorough warm up, use of hills or extra resistance, and cross training, you can take advantage of the benefits of sprint training while keeping the injury and overtraining risks under control. Now that we know the effects of each of the training methods, how do we choose workouts for our weekly routine? For people with average or below average VO2 max, you can get good results from any of the three training methods. But the less experienced and fit you are, the smarter it is to limit your intensity. Overtraining, strains, and other injuries can halt your progress for weeks or even longer. If you haven't been exercising at all, start out with 10 to 12 minutes of light to moderate continuous exercise five days per week. This is enough to give you health benefits while you gradually build up to the 30 minute plus continuous exercise level that is proven to increase your VO2 max. The more fit and experienced you are, the more you'll want to incorporate high intensity training into your routine. Studies show that intervals between three and six minutes with nearly equal rest breaks between efforts offer the fastest improvements in VO2 max. Here are three ways you can introduce yourself to high intensity training. Pick up the pace four or five times for one minute during your usual moderate intensity workout. Also, you can increase the intensity of your moderate workout for up to 10 minutes toward that 80 to 85% threshold effort. Finally, you can do just two or three sprints, 20 to 30 seconds with a long rest break in between Make sure you have a thorough warm up, of course, but that will also boost your VO2 max. One final point is that moderate exercise is for all levels. It's not something you graduate from once you reach a certain level of fitness. Even top athletes use moderate steady state training to recover from their hard workouts and build their base. Okay, before you start training, did you know you can test your own VO2 max and find out whether you meet the healthy standards for your age group? Learn how to take your VO2 max test with this video, and I'll see you next time at Why I Exercise.